hands off Iran, they're saying. That is a alarming and stunning video. Jackie, let's start with you. What are your thoughts when you see something like that? I think that is what this administration is catering to right now. If you think back to October 7th and what the response was from President Biden, he stood up and he said, we stand with Israel. Those were his words. But have his actions actually matched those words? They haven't, Griff. We're sitting here more than six months later, no aid package to be seen. He wants to tie that aid to all kinds of other aid rather than separating it out and making sure that it gets to Israel. And now he's telling Netanyahu, we're not going to stand by you if you want to strike back against Israel. What is Benjamin Netanyahu supposed to do? Just stand there after an attack like this occurred? I mean, it's a really rough situation to be in. And what he's doing is he's caving to the pressure of these groups that are in pockets of this country where he's worried about votes. For example, in Michigan, where he only won in 2020 by a margin of 3%. And he is worried about it, not only because of these kinds of issues there, but also because of the auto workers. So he's thinking about 24 and how he's going to get himself reelected for another term. And he's not thinking about the American people. He's not thinking about the overall country and how it should stand by Israel at a time like this. I mean, quite frankly, it's appalling. You know, you raised Michigan. That's a great point. And, Nicole, a week ago today in Dearborn, Michigan, another demonstration chanting death to America out there. We've got a soundbite of what that organizer had to say. And then when we asked Corinne Jean-Pierre at the White House to respond to it, here's a little bit of what uh, happened. Watch. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. There, but Should we expect a statement from the president on that, though? I mean, it was a pretty significant display. I mean, you're hearing from me. I think that's uh, important. The other part, too, that I do want to be very clear about, you know, peaceful protest is something that the president has also been very, uh, very clear that is important for to give folks space to peacefully protest. But any type of uh, violent rhetoric, we are going to denounce. So, Nicole, there you go. You saw the, the chance, death to America, then the White House, of course, saying they condemn that. But, I mean, if what we just saw out of Chicago is any prelude to what we're going to see at the DNC in, here in Michigan, where yeah. Biden's vo fighting for votes. Well, let's back up just a second. Watching those videos overnight in Iran celebrating the attack on Israel is eerily similar to, do you remember right after 9-11, you had Palestinians that were celebrating in the streets after the attack on American? And it reminded me of that and this growing anti-Americanism all throughout the region. Israel remains our biggest ally there. They are the only ones that have a most aligned with our moral standards, our democracy, and so forth. And it's not only this anti-American uh, feeling across the world, it's growing here in the United States. And it is infiltrating in the United States. We're seeing it in Michigan. We're seeing it in Chicago. And then not only Karine Jean-Pierre, but what about we have members of Congress who are also refusing to condemn death to America chants. There is one thing, freedom of speech. There's another thing, for allowing this anti-American sentimentism to permeate in our country, not to mention with the open rolling admissions across our southwest border, we have the 1.8 million unknown gotaways. We already know how many have been on the terrorist watch list. I mean, it, it, we're in a very dangerous situation here and, and very alarming. And yes, it's 2024 election, but this is very serious. And honestly, we cannot let politics get in the way of our security. And Charlie, does it occur to these protesters chanting death to America or hands off Iran that Ayatollah Khamenei would love nothing more than to actually kill them? Yeah, no, it's a great point. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, after the October 7th attacks, the, you know, the thing that we heard most of all from the pro-Palestinian side is they were talking about worrying about the innocent people in Palestine, which, of course, a lot of, uh, you know, in Gaza, which, of course, a lot of, uh, you know, everybody has concern for innocent people in Gaza. But what's interesting here is this is, they've completely flipped the script on this. They're, they're not even pretending to care about that. What they actually care about are the armed militants. And in this case, they're talking about Iran. They're cheering the armed militants attacking Israel. So those same people have no problem with what happened on October 7th. That was a fantastic win as far as they're concerned. And, you know, and I think you're exactly right, Jackie. The, the Biden campaign, all they care about 
when they look at this is how do we pander to these people? Right. And they look at these people and, and th there's nothing that they're not going to, aren't willing to sacrifice in terms of principles or whatever in order to curry favor with them so that they can wish, win Michigan. And, you know, you can have, you, you know, you, you do have free speech in this mm -hmm. country. You can say what you want to. But if you have a politician who is eagerly seeking the support from people who believe these things, then you have a real problem at the top of that campaign. Well, they have a real problem at the United Nations just a few blocks away. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.